Welcome to this short introduction to Microsoft Teams, which is part of Office 365. Teams is designed as a place for teams of people, large or small, to work, communicate and collaborate together. It's designed to be easy to use, yet extremely powerful. Let's start with a quick tour of the interface. Teams has a navigation bar down the left hand side with activity, chat, teams, assignments, your calendar and files. In activity, you can see everything that's been going on with your teams and your conversations. In chat, you can chat one-to-one -one or one-to-many with your colleagues inside or outside your organization. Teams is the main tab, and inside here are all the teams that you belong to. Your calendar duplicates your Office 365 or Outlook calendar, and in files, you can get to various areas of your storage, including downloads from Teams and your OneDrive. The right-hand area of the main Teams page contains the content, so your conversations, your files, or other content that's been added. In the top right-hand corner, you can see whether the team is private or public. Teams can be customized with virtually any kind of content to make it simple for the people in the team to find and organize what they need. Creating a team is a really easy process and is done from the bottom left of the Teams tab. There are three options. You can join a team with a code and any public teams that are for your whole organization will be listed here. We can create a team. There are four options, each with different features once it's created. The any one is the most popular. Your team needs a name and an optional description and you can make it private or public. Most teams should be private to the people that need to use them. Then we need to add some members. Done by just looking up through the directory or you can paste lists of names into this field. There are two levels of permission in Teams a member or an owner. Members can just use the team and owners can help to manage it. It's a really good idea to have more than one owner so that no one person gets stuck with managing the team. All teams are created with a general channel inside which has a conversation and a files tab. More channels and more tabs can be added later on. In conversations, you can broadcast messages to the rest of your team. This can help you reduce the number of emails that you send. One really useful feature is the at mention. As you can see from the video, you add the at sign, choose somebody's name, and it will notify that person that they have been included in a message. This feature works across the whole of Office 365. Files in Teams are stored under the Files tab and are available to everyone who has access to the team. We can create the usual Microsoft formatted documents just by pressing New. But we can also upload or store any file type at all inside the Files tab, making it really easy to get to what you need. We can also add loads of other different types of content just by pressing the small plus button next to the Files tab. In this example, I'm adding a website, but this could be a link to a planner, a link to a document that's frequently used like an Excel spreadsheet, or a survey for the people in the team, or even links to external tools. Channels in Teams help organize information into different subjects or areas. Every team has a general channel, but we might want to create a channel to organize an event, for example. And again, you can give it a name and a description, and you can post to your team that this channel has been created. And as we've seen from before, each channel gets created with a files and a conversation tab ready to go. It's a good idea to try and think about the number of channels that you need, but as this list grows, you may find that you're more interested in certain channels than others. You can follow or unfollow a channel really easily by clicking the little menu next to it. If you unfollow a channel, you'll no longer get notifications, and if you follow it, it'll keep you updated.
Teams is also home to chat, where I can chat privately with one or more people really easily. Here I can add a message. One really useful feature is that if they've set an autoresponder, you'll see it on the top of your message bar to let you know when they might respond. But I can also find out other things about the people that I'm chatting with, such as their organisation, any files that I've shared, and our activity together. Up in the top right corner, I can start a video call, a voice call, or share my screen directly without having to start a call. I can also then add other people. If I want to start a new conversation, press the little button next to the search box and find somebody from the directory. The calendar in Teams duplicates what I have in my Outlook diary and it's a nice way of scheduling meetings without having to leave Teams. Most of the controls are the same. You can also schedule voice or video calls from here and you might want to check out the other video in this series around using Teams for voice and video. In the files area of Teams I can get access to any recently used files, anything I've downloaded from Teams as well as get to my OneDrive without having to leave Teams. Up in the top right corner of Teams is perhaps one of the most useful settings in Office 365, the ability to set your presence, which lets people who might want to contact you know whether you're likely to be available or not. I can tell people that I'm busy, not to be disturbed, or when I'm going to be back. Each one has a unique set of features, which it will tell you on the top. I can set a status message to tell people who want to contact me when I'm likely to be available, and set that message to expire, almost like a mini out of office. In this menu are also the settings where I can change my theme from the current default one to a dark theme or a high contrast theme for accessibility. I can also control my Teams notifications from here to let Teams know what I want and when. Thanks for watching this introduction to Teams and do check out the other videos in this series as well as the next steps that are on the screen now.